Greetings! I am Tantus Naravan Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It's Monday, we're talking about magic. So today, I felt like we should talk about some of the organizations, some of the formats of gameplay, some of the terms related to magic. So when we start talking about organizations, we should talk about the DCI, the Duelist Convocation International, the main organization run under Wizards of the Coast. When you register with the DCI, you get a PIN number, and then you're allowed to enter all their sanctioned tournaments. Now, the DCI has run a lot of tournaments over the years. They've ran over two million. They just keep getting tournaments out there because they're the main organization of Magic the Gathering. They run some of the major events in Magic the Gathering, which are the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour, the World Championship, and the Grand Prix. So now that we know that they run these tournaments and some of the big tournaments, let's talk about the formats of play. Now, sanctioned formats are what I'm going to talk about today. There are also some casual formats, and I'll talk about them another time, but the sanctioned ones are the ones that the DCI says that you should build your decks under. And there are two big main types, and each of those has a number of subtypes under them. So the first one we're going to talk about is constructed decks. These are decks that you bring with you to an event. They have to be 60 cards or more. You have the limit of four cards of any type. They must be legal for whatever format you're playing under, and if you do choose a sideboard, you can only have up to 15 cards in that sideboard. Now, I haven't talked about a sideboard before, but I'll talk about it now. What a sideboard in Magic is a number of cards that you have that if you're in a tournament format or you're in a format where you're going to be playing an opponent multiple times, after the first encounter with that opponent, once you learn what their deck are, you can sort of switch out some cards or add some cards from your sideboard which would make it easier to fight that opponent. It's basically a number of cards that you would not normally have in your deck that are very circumstantial. So if there's certain types of decks which you know the deck you've made is going to have trouble with, you would have a sideboard that you could add in in case of emergencies. That it's not part of your main deck because you don't want to bog it down too much, but you might be able to filter out some of those cards that aren't going to work at all and put some of these in. So let's talk about another major term involved with this constructed format. There's banned cards and restricted cards. Now these don't come up in all the formats here, they come up in certain ones and they will give you lists of banned and restricted cards. A banned card is a card that's not allowed to be played in that format at all. If that card would be within that format, theoretically, like if the format says it's this set of cards to this set of cards and there's a banned card in amongst those sets, it just tells you, you can't play it because it's been banned from the entire sort of format of gameplay. Restricted means you're only allowed to play with one of those cards. Restricted cards are very powerful, but they're not so powerful or broken that they're going to get banned. There are fortunately not very many banned cards. Those are usually things like anti-cards or physical movement cards, the things that make gameplay very difficult. Or, as I will talk about with Arabian Nights, Shaharazad, where you play sub-game of magic. That would bog down a tournament. So, of course, it's a banned card. Restricted cards are ones that, for whatever reason, having a lot of them in your deck would be very overpowering. So you are still allowed to have one in your deck. So let's talk about these formats which were in the constructed sort of purview. The first one is Standard. Standard is the last two blocks and the last core set. What does this mean? A core set is like Unlimited, which I've talked about before. Those are the core set of Magic cards. They're the ones that sort of come out once a year. They represent very much more the beginner type of sets. And a core set does, at this point, has come out each year in the middle of the year. The upcoming sets, it's hard to say if there's going to be a core set on it. From what I've looked at the schedule of Magic cards, they seem to be sort of changing their format a lot. But I'll talk about that once we see how they're reflecting their new format of setting out sets. But for the longest time, it's been just that core set that's pretty much been every year pretty consistently for the last good number of years. And then the two last blocks. Now what are blocks? Now that I've explained core sets, blocks are sets of three expansions that go together in theme. The first actual one that came out was called Mirage. It was three sets that came together. Mirage, Visions, and Weatherlight. They had the same theme. They had the sort of same general storyline. They had very big similarities between them. Now, technically speaking, the Ice Age block was also one that came out before that, but the third set in that block didn't come out till much later. It, it, they sort of added it back in to complete that block. Now a big thing to do with these blocks of magic cards is that each has one set, the first set in that block has basic lands in them. Now the other sets could theoretically have basic lands for whatever reason if 
more modern packs that you would buy have basic lands with them regardless. It just might mean that the versions of the lands that you get with those packs are actually from the original set from it. Sometimes they are from their own set if the art seems to change between the different sets for whatever reason from the storyline, but if the art would not change for any reason, then the basic lands are from the original in this block of cards, and then they would just be reprinted. But in these early ones, they only put out the basic lands with the first one, because it was a while before they started putting basic lands in the packs of cards. You used to only get them with starter packs or special places like that. So, that's standard. After standard, we talk about modern. What's modern? 8th edition and Mirrodin are the core set and the block which define the beginning of modern. Everything after that is considered modern cards. So that means anything printed after those two is modern, and modern keeps being made now. So if you're playing a modern deck, you'd be playing cards from 8th edition onwards for the core sets, or from the Mirrodin block onwards from the blocks of cards. Now after that is Vintage. Vintage is every card in Magic the Gathering. The only exception is Vintage has a list of banned and restricted cards. That's the big thing about it. So if you're playing a Vintage deck, you might be playing from cards from any set of Magic, from any timeline, except there's a few exceptions. Now Vintage does have a lot of rules for things like using proxies for cards, because if you're using some of those really older cards, which might be very expensive, they have rules for using a proxy in your deck to represent it so that you don't have to play with that expensive card. So you, you could just lay them next to you and say, like, I have these cards, they count as in my deck, I'm using proxies, I can show them to you, that's what they are. Legacy is very similar to Vintage, except there are no banned cards. It's only restricted. So it's a change around because you have no banned cards. So you could have any card in a Legacy deck, it just, there isn't so many legacy tournaments because of that, and usually they're not as important. It might be that you would have a legacy tournament at an event, but it's not the main event itself. It just mean, might mean more friendly. And the last one under the constructed is block constructed. I've talked about these blocks of cards before that are sets of three cards that go together. You could have a deck built specifically from that block. So, as I said, the Mirrodin block. I could have a deck of all cards from Mirrodin. I could have a deck of all cards from Mirage. I could have a deck of all cards from Ice Age. These are blocks of cards. More modern is the Scars of Mirrodin block, uh, the Zendikar block, the Innistrad block. There are even more modern ones after that, the ones that are coming out now. But you play with this block of cards, and all the cards in your deck, save for basic lands, because you could always use different versions of the basic lands. It doesn't matter what set they come from. It's just an exception because the basic lands are reprinted everywhere. But for every other card, you have to be whatever it is from that block, and that's what you're playing at. So, those are all the constructed decks. Now we're going to talk about limited card format games. Limited is a very different kind of game than constructed. Limited, you build the deck at the event. So what it is, is for whatever format it is, you get some cards from there. Either they give you a deck, or they give you packs of cards, whatever it is. You then build a deck at the event. They want you to have at least 40 cards in it, you can have more than four of any card because the chances of getting them are very slim, so they actually don't limit you to that four of any card, especially when you're building certain kinds of decks with limited amount of cards. You might have to have four, more than four of a card in order for this deck to work. And you're allowed to use all the other cards you got at this event as your sideboard. So if I got this huge pile of cards, and, you know, I built a deck out of it, and I have a few more that I decided not to play in there, but if I really needed them, I could add them in as a sideboard. And you can do that in between any game. So, like, your first game you play, after that, you might want to change your deck around. You have that option, actually, because you built your deck right there. So the first kind that I'm going to talk about is Sealed Deck. In Sealed Deck, you get six packs of cards, and then you have to build a deck out of those six packs of cards. You can open them all up. They have everybody open them all at the same time. They give you an amount of time. You look through your cards. You break them apart. You figure out what colors you want to play. They will provide extra lands. That's the big thing. You don't have to worry about lands, because those will be provided, because the fact is, you're not going to get enough lands in these packs of cards. So, using these six packs of cards, you have to build at least a 40-card deck, and then you play whatever tournament is. This is the big format for pre-release tournaments, or release tournaments. When a new set comes out, they often have either a pre-release a week before, or release when it's been come out. These type of tournaments tend to be the sealed deck type, where you get these cards and you play with them that way. Now, the other big format is Booster Draft. Booster Draft involves have, you have to have a lot of players to Booster Draft. 
a sealed deck. Technically, you and a friend could do a sealed deck tournament with just the two of you. You each buy six packs, and you can play that way. But a sealed deck, you traditionally would need at least eight players. You all get around on a table, you all get three packs of cards. Everybody opens their first pack of cards. You look in it, you take one card, pass it to the left. Whatever you got, so everybody's circling around these packs of cards. You take one, circle it, take one, circle it. And it keeps going around like that. And each time you take another card out until this first deck goes away. Then you open the second one, and it goes to the right. And you open the third one, and it goes back to the left again. This thing, you end up with a large number of cards in order to build a deck. And th theoretically, you've been grabbing cards you want to make a deck out of. Now again, lands are provided, so of all these cards that I got, I might not have to worry about not having enough to build a deck, because I'm building a 40 card deck again. Because of the one third card that you sort of want to aim for, you really only need 27 of those cards to make your actual deck. Now there are some disadvantages to booster drafts. You can have people that are there just for the rares, so that they might snipe a lot of rares. So like, if you see cards in your deck and you're like, I don't need this rare, you know, maybe it's expensive, I'm building this deck, you might pass it along for whatever reason. Someone might be there just to take it. He's not going to tank out. You get people like that. It's an unfortunate thing. That's why I don't really like Booster Draft a lot. If you're doing it with a lot of people that you're friendly with, you're probably not going to do that thing. Uh, I've done Booster Drafts where one person technically owns all the cards, so then you don't have to worry about it, because he's going to get all the cards in the end, and you're just doing it friendly. He buys a box, he's like, let's do a Booster Draft between us, you know, that sort of thing. He, it's his cards you're just playing with them temporary. Then you don't have to worry about it as much. But a lot of these ones where you're buying into, you're getting these packs of cards, you're doing it this way, you can have people which are real jerks. But anyway, there are a few other variations on this draft format that do come into play, and I could talk about them, but all it is is a basic variation on the same. You're passing cards around, you're taking choices of them. There's one where I open a pack, lay it out, I take a card, the next person around takes a card, you go around all the way that so everybody knows whose cards you're getting. The next person does that with their pack, down the line back to you, and you do it with your next pack and you do it that way. It's a little slower deck creation, but then it's also a little bit of different strategy because then you know what everybody's getting. There's of course another format where a whole bunch of cards built for a booster draft are gotten together. So they're just like random cards. And you're drawing from the random cards then, you know, you're sort of splitting them apart into piles, taking from the piles, passing along, that sort of thing. That's another format for booster draft you can have. They're technically called different things, but since they're rarer, I'm not really going to talk a big amount about them. Alright, so that's it for today. We've talked about different ways you can construct magic decks, some of the formats of it, the organization of DCI, and various tournaments that you might be able to enter if you tend up being a really great magic player. Because there's a lot of money to win in these big tournaments. It's just you have to be really great at it. I know I'm not good enough to enter these tournaments. Anyway, that's it for today. Please, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Just say anything you want to. We'll talk about it. We'll discuss it. I'll respond the best I can. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Share it with some friends. We have to spread the word of the Jacobin Empire as much as we can. Please, join, subscribe, become a citizen. We're always looking for more members, definitely. And until the next time, I bid you... Farewell.